Hey guys, this is going to be Season 7, Episode 7 of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Thank you guys for clicking on the video. Let's just start right out from the gate. The first thing I have to say is uh, Joyce. Mama Joyce. The, the, the first thing out the gate. Her and some of her motherfucking bullshit. All right, so we go, Candy and Todd, they show, they're just showing up out of this really big, nice-looking cookout that they had over at Aunt Nora's house. Child, the first thing I catch, Candy goes over, she says hi to Joyce, and Joyce gives her, mm, yeah, how you doing? I'm like, what is this dynamic that they have? Because it's more like, like girlfriends where one is really jealous of the other one. Is what I see a lot of times. But anyway, so um, then they, you know, they, they're broke out. Winnie's talking to Candy. And Candy's like, you know, my mother, she's mad. You know, mad at me, this, that thing, and the other. She's always entertaining this bullshit. Joyce is always mad. Joyce always has a reason to be upset about something. You know, Joyce needs to get a motherfucking life. And Candy needs to help her to it. Drive her... To where they're giving out lives and drop her to fuck off. That's my mama. That's my mama. I, I'm not going to fight with my mom. Well, your mama's going to keep on dragging you like Emmett Till, bitch. You th it's just ridiculous. It gets to a point where it's just too much. I'm tired of looking at it. And I know I love my mother just as much as Candy loves hers. But I will not let my mother fucking drag me like that. And then I'm taking care of you. and do You know, I do nice things for my mother because that's what I think I'm supposed to do. But at the point that my mother get ridiculous like Joyce, child, cut her ass off like a lightning bolt. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. She literally treats Candy like a bitch off the street. She don't understand. Candy don't don't appreciate nothing that nobody didn't done for her. What the fuck did you do? You got some motherfucker dicking you around. Totally dicking you around, Joycey. And tearing up her motherfucking house. Is she supposed to be appreciative of him tearing up her motherfucking house? The bitch that lost her motherfucking mind. She's dickmatized. Some old boy. And there, so we see where Candy get it from. Because it's... Joyce seems like a fool for a man, and that's how Candy was, too. Todd turned out to be something different, but it always seemed like Candy had the underdog position when it comes to her relationships, and we see where she gets it from, because Joyce turned somersaults for a man, look like, dumbass shit, and then treat Candy any old kind of way. I don't know what to tell you. You do what you do, and yeah, that's your mama, that's your mom, girl, please. Like I said, drive her up to where they're giving out the lives, drop her the fuck off, tell her to call you on the cell phone when she's done. Anyway, moving on, we meet this new girl, this D Demetria uh, McKinney. She's an actress and a singer. I'm actually seeing her do a cover of Whitney Houston song, and she really is good. Her vocals are really good. She used to be on a Tyler, some Tyler Perry show. I wasn't watching the show, but... um. She was on a Tyler Perry production at some point. Um, real cute girl. Came into Cynthia's uh, uh, little agency with this white outfit on. Definitely built. Definitely sharp. A um, little airheadish. Just a little bit. A little airheadish. Um, she needs some models for a video or whatever. And she's been dating this guy named Roger Bob. Now, Roger Bob was like the big thing. On this episode, we found out about Roger Bob. Robert, Roger Bob likes the ladies, and the ladies obviously like Roger Bob. There was a whole situation about Kenya. Go figure. Kenya always has something going on about somebody's motherfucking man. That bitch. <sighs> See, here we go. We're moving on to the point where Kenya don't deserve no apologies, y'all. Kenya, get ready to get started with somebody else with their man. That bitch need to either get a man... Or go sit down. Because she's going to walk up on another good ass whooping. She really is. Anyway. So she had taken a picture with Roger Bob at some function. And the girl, Dimitri, had, had seen it. And she didn't really appreciate it. Which was kind of. She was really stretching it out a little bit. But whatever. Um, She was mad because Kenya didn't like come public and say. No, that's not my man or whatever. But like, fuck all that. Who cares about all that? She don't know you, bitch. She don't know you nothing. But that's the game that Kenya plays, right? I don't know you. That's the game Kenya plays. Anyway, moving forward. 
Kenya was at a photo shoot and Claudia was actually invited to come down. She came in. The two of them, they're just fake and phony and they both get on my nerves and I'm getting tired of seeing Claudia. I'm like, I gave her a chance. I think she's useless, really. You know, I'm not a fan of Portia at all. Y'all know I don't like Portia. But I, I have more fun watching Portia be a dumb bitch than looking at Claudia with this throwing stones and hiding her hands. Like, seriously, I don't know why they gave Portia's peach to Claudia. Because she's much more fun being mean to Kenya on the slide. But anyway, um, they end up going on, they end up talking about the Roger Bob thing. Here, Claudia's been invited, because she lives in the same building with Roger Bob. She's been invited to the Demetria's uh, video release party. So... Kenya takes her motherfucking ass on down to Roger Bob's office. Do you see what I'm saying? So, come on, people. That Kenya is really too much. She's always doing the most. She goes down to his office on some old bogus shit, talking about she want to do some project or something or other, and he, she ends up getting herself an, inv an invite to the party. And um, she's flirt steadily flirting at the man. You know, she's flirting at him. And then... They talk about Demetria and how she has an attitude now. And he told her, you need to meet her and y'all can, you know, clear that up because it ain't no real big deal. That is my lady. You know, this, that thing and the other. And Kenya was taken back, you know, that I guess she thought he was going to lie about it, but he didn't. He let her know. He put her ass in her place. Um, and she flirted on and she just went, you know, just whorish. She's just whorish with that slickness on top of it. But anyway, um, that was that. And, uh, then in her confessional, she fucking Ree and Nene. I said, see, that, conf that confessional bites them all in the ass. You get on that confessional, say all that shit, and then that shit come out. That's why they always fighting and arguing and shit. And it's shit that they wouldn't say, because Kenya wouldn't say that to Nene's face. Now, the truth of the matter, child, did y'all see that motherfucking hair Nene had on? I... Come on, Nene, I be riding with you, girl, but... That fucking dead Sharpay, it was a dead Sharpay, smacked on, shooshed up the front. That was a fucking mess. That looked just like somebody shot a Sharpay, stuck it on her head, combed it to the back, and then shooshed it up the front. She looked ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Makeup, the hair, the color, all of it. It was fucked up. It was really fucked up, Nene. That was a bust, girl. That, that didn't work at all. At all. But she was down, um, she went down to HSN. She was doing live, you know, live two hours, debuting her little stuff on HSN. I thought that was very interesting uh, that, to see how they actually do what they do over at HSN. And it was a good thing. She actually was doing her little, you know, her little tunic blouses that she wears, you know, fashion designer. That just kills me. Like, you, you made a tunic, honey. Okay, it's a rectangle with two circles cut out where the motherfucking sleeves go. But you're a designer, girl, because you got a name and you got somebody to put behind it. Good for you, bitch. And anyway, she took it and it sold out. Um, It sold out and that was good, but she was killing me with this. She was like so, so tired. She's like, oh, I'm just so sleepy. I don't know about you, but, you know, I'd be a good sleepy bitch too. You know, there's times I'm good and sleepy. But when something that I, one of my dreams is actually coming to fruition... I don't, the fatigue don't take me down. I just didn't get, I was like, Nene, that's, that's silly. You know, stop complaining. Get another cup of coffee, bitch, and let's get on with it. Especially when you know you're making money. When I'm making money, honey, I'll be tired later. Fuck that. And my bottom line is always green, honey. Anyway, moving on. Um, like I said, she sold out. It was cool. Um, Dan Sharpay on her head. Yuck. Didn't care for it. Anyway, Candy and Phaedra actually got together over at Candy's house. And I'm kind of understanding Phaedra with this thing. Every time Candy gets together with Phaedra now, and when they're doing their scenes together, it's always like Candy's playing devil's advocate. You know, she's asking Phaedra all the questions that the people want to know. And you can tell Phaedra don't want to talk about this shit. Phaedra do not want to talk about that Apollo shit. She really don't. And then she said in her confessional, she's like, if I wanted to talk about Apollo, Candy, I can go home and talk to Apollo, honey. 
But she has this little cousin of hers, little Melvin, has him come and he's talking to Phaedra all about the boys and how it's best to just tell her sons just that, you know, that their dad's going to jail and all this here and all that there. And then Phaedra's like, okay, well, because he's saying uh, he held some um, resentment because nobody told him. Was, he was thinking his dad was working or whatever. Child, he's in the program. Honey. But anyway, um, and then Phaedra starts asking a question, like, you know, have you had any run-ins with the law? And he's like, um, yeah, a couple. <laughs> Why the fuck you bring this jailbird-ass motherfucker in here trying to give me some motherfucking advice? Child, go get your record expunged, Teddy, and get on out of my damn face. Anyway, so that was real stupid. You know, Candy went to all her crime fit and all that. Girl, night, night. Okay? Anyway, moving on. Um, Demetria's event was the last thing that we actually dealt with. Poor thing. She had this beautiful uh, skirt on. This shirt she had on, I said, child, it, it just was like, it. she put her head in it, and it just didn't have no side seams. And it was glued to her titties. I kind of, I see where she was trying to go with it, where it was, you know, she's trying to do something really risque. It just it just didn't do well. The fa fabric choice was wrong. Um, and that's not her fault. She bought it from somebody. But fabric choice was wrong. It was really crinkling and things like that. But she had a, a beautiful damn skirt. The skirt was gorgeous that she actually had on. But the top was just wrong. It didn't work. It really didn't work. Um, Roger Bob didn't show up for the function. He had some editing or something else to do. And the event was just a flop. Her video wouldn't play. Um, the girls literally ended up leaving before, you know, before it was over and everything like that. Um, Kenya, as always, was there. Her and uh, Demetria had the little hash out. It looked like it was getting ready to turn up real good. But um, they brought down Kenya's come. Oh, no, I don't want your man. This, that thing, and the other. That's, again, that admission of guilt. Because she surely had told um, Claudia how sharp Roger Bob was and how good of a catch that he was and all that. But she went in there, I don't want your man to say the other, like she's letting her know, you know. And, and Demetria was given, yeah, well, whatever, so forth, and whatever. But they just kept it too acute. But I was like, look at Kenya, guilty again. We're going to have some problems with you and this Roger Bob. I don't think this is the last we're going to hear of Demetria and Roger Bob and that motherfucking Kenya. And Demetria seems like one that would drag her again. So, I can't do her. I really can't. Um, let me say this. Cynthia. How tired am I of Cynthia? I am so tired of Cynthia. You, Ooh, Cynthia, you're a, a slick, sly, sideways, motherfucking applehead bitch. She really is. She really is. And they talk about Peter. But Cynthia got some shit with her, too. I prefer, they just give Peter Cynthia's fucking peach. Cynthia's aggravating. She's sitting up there, her confessionals, that confessional, and then all she's going to do is cry. That's the part to kill me. Cry after you say the shit. Now, Phaedra was sitting there. Apollo brought his motherfucking raggedy ass up in there. Then he's trying to make a scene. You know, he's all like, do you love me? This and all wanting to be all over her. A mess. That's not the time nor the place. He is about to drive me absolutely crazy. I wish he would take his ass on down to the jailhouse, report in, and leave Phaedra the fuck alone. Like, seriously. She was appalled. She was appalled. You can see it all over her face. Her body language, she was squeezed in like this. She didn't want him to touch her. You know, and he's just going through all this all in the bar. I'm like, this is horrible. Absolutely horrible and unnecessary. I've been to give him one of these, honey. Motherfucker. Just unnecessary. And he act like he getting high. That's how he acts. He acts like some old high motherfucker. Nobody got no time for that. Anyway, Cynthia's ass going to sit in her confessional and say, Oh, Phaedra, aren't you glad to see your husband? Little Southern Belle. Girl, your slip is showing. Now, Cynthia, let me tell you something. We all know, bitch, you don't want none of Miss Parks, okay? None. You don't want it with Phaedra, Cynthia, because you will really be sitting around somewhere fucking crying. Nene gets you together enough. You don't want it with Phaedra, bitch. Go somewhere and sit down, fucking Applehead. Anyway, 
Oh, she drove me crazy with that. But that's basically where we ended out at. I ended up watching uh, Watch What Happens Live with uh, Andy Cohen. And Phaedra was actually on there. Clean, 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 clean. With these motherfucking white dress pants and this white blouse. And this badass necklace. Snatched, Miss Phaedra. Painted for the gods. She was so dusted. And she sat there, baby, and she answered them questions. And the folks, you know, the folks was biting out. Girl, she gave them dust. Oh, well, yes. Well, maybe so. Well, mm. I cracked up the whole time. She was on there with Faith. What her good. We ain't going to talk about that. Y'all know after R&B Divas, I don't even use Faith no more. Some people just should stay off the reality show because it changes people's whole perception of you. I still love that. Uh, what is it? Soon as I get home. But I ain't got Faith to do. She showed me a side her. I didn't care for it too much. But anyway, that was it. Thank you guys for clicking on the video. You can thumbs up or thumbs down. You guys know how that works. And I will see you guys next week for another episode of These Atlanta Folk. <laughs> All right, guys. Later. Bye-bye. Hold it just one moment. A couple things that I kind of I moved too fast and I went off of. Over at Aunt Nora's house at the cookout. Like I said, Winnie was talking to Candy. Nora actually was talking to Joyce. And they're going back and forth and Joyce is going on and carrying on. And they're talking about, well, we're just not going to speak. You know, they were just nasty and everything. So they put them together in the room, um, in the house. Everybody else was outside. They put them together in the house. And they were supposed to sit in there and try to hash out what the issue was. And literally, Candy actually had read off this um, nasty-ass fucking text message that Joyce had actually sent her. Again, treating her like a bitch on the street, like some random whore. Um, and she read it and everything. And when they were really just getting ready to go into it real, real good, that's what Joyce was say. Candy, Candy, you know what? I don't want to be upset and I don't want to fight. I'm taking this medicine so I don't get an aneurysm. Now, do that old whore know how to win a fight or not? And Candy just backed off of it and just basically squashed it. Just just foolishness. I almost forgot that. But yeah, I'm taking medicine to avoid getting an aneurysm. Where they do that at, Joyce? They made that up just for you? Because Candy's a millionaire, so they done made some medicine just for you that'll stop you from getting an aneurysm, you know, when you stop being confronted with your bullshit. I don't know about this lady. I really don't. I don't know about her. The more I see her, the less I care for her. The only thing that I know for a fact that Joyce loves is Riley. I don't believe Joyce likes Candy as much as she likes Riley. Riley's the only one that I think she's actually concerned with. Candy is a trip to the bank. She's like a walking fucking ATM card. Anyway, I forgot about that. And then also, at HSN... Where Nene, this bothered me. Nene's always getting herself in this bullshit. Nene was, do, there's a guy who was there that was assisted her. His name was Aaron. And she says, oh, yes, honey, even at HSN, I got my gay on board, honey. You got to have your gay on board. You ain't had enough of that yet, Nene? You ain't had enough of that? All that playing, the, the, the game with the gays and all that. You ain't had enough. You ain't done putting your foot in your mouth. Why couldn't he just be, I can't live without my assistant Aaron? Why he got to be gay Aaron? You know, again, because that actually puts that out there that you got some issue, that you're not wholehearted with the shit that you're saying. And you just see it. I mean, you just keep on stepping in that shit. How many times you walk out of a door and keep stepping in the same pile of shit? I just, I just think it's so ridiculous. And again, it makes me look at her like, really? Really? And that's how she basically sees them as her pocket gaze. A mess. I just wanted to just, I don't know if y'all caught that or not. I caught it. Foot and shit yet again. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Doesn't make any sense. And the thing, and the one thing too, see, look, here I go. When Joyce said, I ain't thinking about Candy. She can have that house back. Really? So you're going to give her the one you live in too? Because she paid for that motherfucker too, Joycey. 
Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous, guys. What can you say? Mm, mm, mm.